It's been nearly three years since the devastating earthquake and tsunami in Japan caused a meltdown at the Fukushima nuclear plant, spilling radioactive material into the Pacific Ocean. Now a team of 50 scientists from Alaska to Mexico will test the kelp along the West Coast waters for the fallout. Among the researchers is my guest, SDSU professor of biology, Matthew Edwards. Welcome to Evening Edition. Thank you very much. Now, Matthew, uh, the name of this joint research venture is called uh, Project Kelp Watch. Yes. Why look for radiation levels in kelp, and why now, three years after the fact? Um, good questions. Um, well, the first of those to look at it them now is it takes a couple of years for the water to travel across the Pacific. Um, so the water from the, the area that where the disaster occurred um, is expected to be hitting our coast sometime around early this year, March, getting into going through the rest of the year. So it took this long to get there. And we're looking at it in kelp because a kelp is a really good sentinel for things that are in the water. They tend to take up things from their surroundings and restore them in their tissues. The other thing is they occur up and down the entire coast and they're really widely distributed. So anything that's gonna hit our coast pretty much has to go through the kelp forest to get there. So they're spatially placed and it's taken this while long for the water to get here. Okay, how and uh, will we? How how will you be taking these samples, and where will you be taking them? Uh, uh, we're going to be taking the samples here in San Diego from the Point Loma Kelp Forest. We're working with a number of colleagues, as you've mentioned, about 50 scientists up and down the coast. So we'll be working with researchers at Scripps Institution of Oceanography, as well as a number of institutions up the coast. So locally, we'll be getting from Point Loma, from La Jolla Kelp Forest, and from the Kelp Forest in North County. And we're looking at video, obviously kelp. Uh, it goes all the way down to yes. the floor. Are you going to be uprooting those or are you going to just be taking it off the surface? No, at, right now we're going to be taking these things from the surface. Um, that's where, you know, some of this, the most biologically active areas that's up in the full sun where they're photosynthesizing. Um, it also happens to be when you're taking kelp, if you take it from the surface, you're not really disturbing the kelp individual because they're growing from the base. So it's a sustainable way of taking it. It's also, if we're going to see a single, it's going to be there. How are you going to be able to measure it and how are you going to be able to determine that this radiation comes from uh, Fukushima? Um, well, we're going to be measuring it by, um, we have to process the kelp here in San Diego, so we'll be grinding it down to a fine powder once we dry it. And then we'll be sending it up to UC Berkeley where a colleague will be measuring it. Um, and so the, you know, the, the instrumentation that they're using um, up there will be spe specifically designed for measuring this. Okay, um, and, and, and they're able to tell that the type of radiation from Fukushima, is that how you'll be able to tell that it's not just a radiant radiation floating in the, uh, oh, in the ocean? Oh, yeah, um, so we're gonna be looking for specific elements. We're gonna be looking for um, uh, cesium, cesium-134 and 137, which are the byproducts of say, fission reactions, things that you might expect from a nuclear disaster. So it's, we're looking for something that we would expect from this. From this particular one. Yes. I know radiation, you say that, it's sort of like saying yeah. shark in the water. Yeah, uh, it could be scary. Should swimmers, divers, or other ocean enthusiasts, including fishermen, uh, be concerned about this? Well, I don't believe so, and, and my colleagues and I, none of us believe so. And those of us who have looked for this, um, that we're finding that it's really in background levels. That's what we expect, you know, nothing really different than anything, anything you'd be expected to encounter in your everyday life. Um, you know, we don't have the answer for that, so we can't give it definitively, but, you know, I still dive, I still eat seafood, and most of the people who are looking at this do also. Again, we don't expect it, but that's uh, why we're doing the but study. But back in Fukushima, they're actually, the, the tuna there and the, the fish there actually are, do have high levels of contamination. Very much so, yeah. So this is the thing, you know, how far you are from the source really matters and how long it takes to get there. We're thousands of kilometers and years from there. So, yeah, we do see big differences, you know, it could be thousand times full or thousands of times full differences between here and there. Okay, and I know you're just about to start on this research mm -hmm. project. Um, how soon will these results be available and, and where are you gonna take these results? What happens next? Well, um, we're gonna try to uh, get the first set of uh, analyses done for, uh, by later this year. That's dependent upon, you know, everyone get collaborating, getting the sample sent, and then um, our uh, co colleagues in Berkeley being able to process them. So we would hope to have these later this year. And once we get the results, you know, these will be re made available to the public. We'll let people know what's going on. To, you know, if we find something, then we're, we're going to follow this thing up in much stronger, you know, much more earnest, much more intense okay. way of doing it. We will be looking forward yeah. to those results. So SDSU biology professor Matthew Edward, thanks so much. Thank you.